In part three, we talked about standardization and in lesson four, about the importance of spectrum. In this chapter, we will discuss some of the new 5G technologies and how they depend on spectrum. As you remember, IT requires that 5G provide enhanced mobile broadband, ultra-reliable low-latency communications, and massive machine-type connections. Concretely, these requirements will be met with the help of new technologies. We'll now look at some that have been standardized or frozen by 3GPP release 15 and 16. We'll talk about new radio, massive MIMO, polar coding, and mobile edge computing. These innovations work together to address two of the ITU's requirements for 5G, enhanced mobile broadband and ultra-reliable low-latency communications. 3GPP standards for the third requirement, massive machine-type communications, were not frozen as we were shooting this video. New radio, beamforming, and massive MIMO are closely related. Massive MIMO enables new radio, and one of the main features of new radio is beamforming. So I'll describe these three together. MIMO, an abbreviation for multiple input, multiple output, is a type of antenna that's been around since the 4G era. In a nutshell, MIMO is a technology that maximizes the transmission and reception capabilities of multiple antennas to increase the quality, capacity, and strength of a radio signal. Originally, MIMO antenna units were made up of two or four antennas. 5G MIMOs contain as many as 64 antennas, and that's why they're called massive. Beamforming, a technology for higher frequency transmissions, is one of the capabilities of a massive MIMO. As we saw in the previous chapter, 5G will need a lot of spectrum, gigahertz of it. Some of that spectrum will be found in the low band, but the rest will be in the C band, as well as in the super fast millimeter wave high band. At higher frequencies, radio transmissions have a shorter range. Moreover, higher frequency transmissions can be more easily disrupted by physical objects, like walls or trees, or even rain. Beamforming helps to overcome that. When a massive MIMO detects that a terminal, that's a smartphone or a CPE, is located relatively far, several antennas will send out the same signal, but with different phases and amplitude. If antennas produce light, instead of radio signals, a traditional antenna would brighten an entire room like a light bulb, whereas massive MIMO would illuminate objects like a flashlight. Beamforming is one of the main features of new radio, one of 5G's key technologies. New radio has another important feature, reducing the imbalance in the quality of coverage for uplink and downlink. In mobile transmissions, the downlink signal is stronger than the uplink because base stations have a much higher transmit power than mobile phones or other terminals. As a result, the coverage performance in downlink is much better. This issue is magnified if you go higher in the spectrum of radio frequencies. New radio can solve this problem by using different frequencies for uplink and downlink. This is called decoupling. In previous generations of mobile networks, the frequencies were the same. With 5G new radio, they're still the same when the terminal is close to the base station and the uplink signal is strong. When the terminal is further away and the quality of the signal isn't as strong, the base station will trigger the terminal to switch to a lower uplink frequency. As we saw in the previous chapter on spectrum, lower frequencies have longer range. So this is how 5G new radio helps to improve uplink coverage. One of the main features of 5G is increased bandwidth, as high as 20 gigabits per second. New radio also makes that possible, primarily through the use of the new control channel coding technology, polar coding. Wireless telecommunications are limited by the constraints of a theorem from a US mathematician, Claude Shannon, who stated in 1948 that there is fixed limit at which information can be reliably transmitted at a given bandwidth. But Shannon also said that a channel coding, a process for detecting and correcting errors, provides the means to reach that limit. Polar coding was discovered by the Turkish professor of electrical engineering, Erdal Erikin, in 2008. A breakthrough in wireless communications, polar codes are so far the only channel coding scheme that has been proven to reach Shannon's limit. In a nutshell, polar coding 
is a method for reducing the amount of redundant data that is sent over a radio signal to protect the integrity of a message. Reducing the amount of redundant data speeds up radio transmissions by simplifying the process of encoding and decoding. If you were to think of data being sent wirelessly as fragile vases being shipped, polar coding would be a method for minimizing the amount of padding material used to protect the vases. In this scenario, channel coding would be the process of packing and unpacking the vases. The simpler the packaging, the simpler the packing and unpacking. This is what polar coding achieves. It's now time for the last technology in this video, mobile edge computing. This technology reduces the latency of 5G, or to put it another way, it helps to meet the URLLC requirement. With 5G, network latency can be as low as one millisecond, one-tenth that of 4G. One of the main factors responsible for latency is terrestrial transmission. Under a pre-5G deployment scenario, a base station has to connect to the network core, which in some situations could be located hundreds of kilometers away. This is fine if the base station connects to the core network through a fully optical connection, but that's not always the case. 5G moves part of the core near the base station in the form of mobile edge or multi-access edge computing. Edge computing, also called cloud edge, consists of data servers of various sizes, some smaller than a desktop computer, and others the size of cabinets that are located near the base station in distances varying from a few meters to a few kilometers. Mobile edge, or multi-access edge, is one of the main methods used for reducing latency in 5G. And with this, this chapter on the technologies that make up 5G comes to an end.